to begin with in the contemplations we might spend time really noticing that I don't live in a body that is bordered. It feels like that, so we, we're not going to negate that. But little by little, through different uh, sort of experiential explorations, we will directly see that bodily sensations, energy, sounds, uh, smells, all these, all these, all these experiences happen in me and me being this listening presence mm -hmm. so this this is quite profound because it's in those moments not a concept we've heard this concept many times but it's an actual glimpse hi i'm ricky Dorius. welcome to episode 43 of the mind that ego podcast ellen emmett returns to the show Ellen is a psychotherapist and facilitator of authentic movement. Our first conversation in episode 29, Non-Duality in the Shadow, covered the psychological aspects of awakening. This time we focus on Ellen's teaching of the awakening body and yoga meditations in the tradition of non-duality and Kashmir Shaivism. This is an exploration of our true nature at the level of tactility and feeling. We discuss gentle practices to relax the somatic sensation of separation and realiven the senses, the undefinable nature of Tantra, how listening to sensation differs from hedonism and sensory indulgence, embodying versus intellectualizing, method versus devotional practice, the pros and cons of self-trust, value and intuition, embracing not knowing, plus much more. Just a reminder before we jump into the conversation to please like, rate, subscribe and share to help more people access the podcast. Enjoy. Ellen, welcome back to the Mind That Ego podcast. Hi. Hi. It's nice. good to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know we, we've discussed before, we, we're going to have a spontaneous conversation. Yeah. But based around the idea of Tantra and the Tantric path. Oh my God, you're throwing out technical terms already. I know, which we're going to have to define. <laughs> I can't define Tantra. <laughs> that's your okay, task. You You've got to define it. <laughs> um, I mean, that's the issue, isn't it? Like when, when you do introduce this and, and there are already, I'm sure, established ideas, misconceptions. But I never use that word, Ricky. So um, anyway. Is it the wrong subject? Have I chosen the wrong subject? <laughs> No, but I think I think I know why you're using that word. It's because I share <clears throat> an exploration of the body that's in the non-dual tradition and the Kashmir tradition, which is also sometimes referred to as tantric. Mm -hmm. So I, sorry, I don't mean to jump at you. <laughs> <clears throat> so I can talk about that approach, mm -hmm. but I can't define tantra because tantra has, I, you know, I I will ask some some other tantric masters and on another occasion mm -hmm. yeah i mean this is a thing it's also and that is, you're right that is why i wanted to approach it the, the subject in terms of your background with the kashmir shaivism working with the body and i know in our last conversation there was a lot of emphasis i know you have like the awakening body as well and a lot of emphasis on awakening through rather than transcending and my very non-expert non-guru like understanding of tantra is that maybe that's where it deviates from certain traditions that are just they focus more on transcendence rather than going through the material through through the um i mean that's such a broad term like through the material but through through experience yes <clears throat> yes, that's right. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have a little cat. In French, we say, j'ai un chat dans la gorge. I have a cat in my throat. Mm -hmm. Probably very tantric. <laughs> <laughs> um, Talk through it. <laughs> yeah. <than> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, I, I, you know, I'm not an erudite. I'm not a scholar at all. And I, I sort of received, quote unquote, this approach or this tradition from my teacher who was who is Francis Lucille, whose teacher was Jean Klein. And Jean Klein himself had a teacher somewhere in India, northern India, southern India, I can't remember, who was <clears throat> who was a, a master in, in Kashmir, what's called Kashmir Shaivaism. And 
I think I'm just going to avoid the jargon and try to be simple. Yes. And, and really, it is a spiritual tradition. So it isn't a psychological tradition. It isn't an, an exploration that's a, geared towards, in a way, the content of our experience, the content of our day-to-day -day life. It's 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 an exploration of of the ultimate reality of what we are. <clears throat> but instead of extracting consciousness as that reality from the content of experience, from our thoughts and feelings and sensations, it's exploring uh, reality as one seamless unfolding. And um, in a sense, it's, it's exploring life in the moment. And there's no attempt at sort of discerning, you know, what is consciousness versus what is the body or the mind. It's just this sort of allowing moment by moment for for experience to be as it is not that we have a choice anyway <laughs> but in this approach we are just adopting you could say we're adopting a position of listening but it's not a sort of so to begin with you might understand by that a listening that's an orientation or a focus towards or so to begin with often it is that we we are sort of listening to the body and then the gradual invitation is is going to hopefully indicate that this listening is unfocused is the aperture effortlessly relaxes to widen <clears throat> and at some point in this exploration, we might have a glimpse that I am the listening. I am this listening presence. I am this tactile listening presence, mm -hmm. intimately one with everything that comes and goes. It, and in fact, things no longer come and go. There's just this sort of life flowing. I mean, and this this is a description of an exploration. Um, I'm going to send it back to you so you can. <laughs> yeah, that was beautifully put, really beautifully put. And and I like, you know, the idea of the, the listening as the revelation, tuning into life and, and being receptive to it. I mean, Would in you... a way, the listening that becomes listened to in the beginning we listen to the body to the sensations and the emotions and the energy and the density and the tension and the feelings and the thinkingness the whole and the sense percent everything is is uh attended to to begin with as, as i said sort of maybe in a narrow way and then through the guidance through the invitation in a in a way, what begins to be listened to is the listening itself, which is no longer an orientation or an effort, or it's it's just life living, life lifing, mm -hmm. listening, listening. And I'm I'm doing you know I'm 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 tracing an arc very rapidly for a process that's not rapid and mm -hmm. and that doesn't deliver a glimpse that lasts. It's it's more like you know like this because the conditioning has it that i feel myself to be this body mind and when i sit and begin to listen there's going to be so much going on a lot of wrestling and 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 resistance and attempts at manipulating my experience and 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 a, ten a tendency to think about my, what is being experienced rather than just simply to feel with a tactile sense. So that so all of that is going to take time to really reacquaint ourselves with tactility, with mm. senses, with with smelling and touching and hearing and tasting and and feeling and sensing rather than comparing evaluating subtitling remembering project you know so that's part of the of the exploration how for you would you discern the difference between maybe a more default approach 
we might call it a hedonistic approach. So, so the approach of getting lost in sensation, being Did you distracted, say hedonistic? Hed hedonistic. Yeah. Like, cause you mentioned the senses, the, the difference between what you're talking to and someone such as my past self, for sure. And many people <laughs> where there's maybe not Bad. sinful behavior Sinful me. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm down my spiritual um, persona all over that, but, but the, yeah, just the indulgence in senses versus what you're speaking well, to. When you indulge in the senses, you have a preference. You're going to gravitate towards pleasure, pleasurable mm -hmm. sensations, um, expanding sensations, etc. Whereas in this approach, and that's natural, we're conditioned mm -hmm. for that. And in a way, there's nothing wrong with that. And in fact, perhaps there's a case, there's a place for that. Perhaps when we do that in a sort of meditative way, we allow the body to all on its own because it's going to move towards its expanded state or its relaxed state, which is pleasurable. Uh, actually, the hedonistic way is not always a bad way. But I think you're talking about something else, which would be a sort of cultivating of pleasure <clears throat> mm -hmm. or seeking pleasure. And, and this approach, uh, again, the invitation is, is, is to sort of take our, our sit, sit as a listening presence and suspend our preferences. Mm. So that if in the moment where there is tension or resistance in the, in the body, so it may come as a whole gamut of things, a sense, a feeling or a sensation in the body accompanied by a storyline. Like, I don't like this. I'm bored to tears. This is stupid. All sorts of things or something else. In this approach, we, we, we sort of set that bit to the side, mm. try, you know, that's the invitation. We try to set the sort of story part of the resistance to the side it's not it's not really the place and we and we um and and the invitation is not to not to do anything not to do anything which which isn't always easy certainly not to begin with because we are so conditioned to do something to avoid to manipulate to mm -hmm. to get busy with whatever it may be that is not the pleasurable. Mm -hmm. So, so we, we don't, we, first we have to welcome the attempt to do something. And that, that itself is a tension of the, of the body mind. Like, so, so that is welcomed and it takes time for that to just because it's not one layer. One layer, then this reveals another layer and another mm. layer. And in a way, that's the practice. That is the Kashmir approach. It's like we're not trying to peel the onion all the way so we can get to this amazing... No. It's just this sort of loving ritual where we are just allowing for no reason. And almost like as, a, as an offering to, to this invisible altar... Mm -hmm. And at the end of the session, we may may or may not touch or feel a sense of expansion or a sense of borderlessness or a sense of expansion. We may, because in a way, we have orientated ourselves in that direction. And the reason we have is mysterious. You know, what? why do we... Why do we go to things like that too? Because there is there is a desire to to align this body mind with the I am a body mind with the I am whatever you want to call it. There is an alignment there, just like a wave in the ocean. There's a resonance. Mm. How would you like in that? And I really like your description of that. And and you mention. Because you say like in the session, do you mean like in a in a meditation, in a, a a deliberate practice? I think I'm talking about you know my offering or when yeah. I yeah, and it could be a, an attitude in life, but it seems to me that at least for myself, 
when I attended sessions and retreats and uh, it was like really uh, dedicating a certain amount of time in a context where you could leave your life outside. Yeah. And you knew that this was not a place where you were going to be exploring the psychological content of your life, mm. but where you were really going to, I don't know how to put it into words really, but it's another kind of exploration. It's, um, Yeah, I'm because I'm interested in that, like how you describe, and, and my view as well is that you you know you need, at least in my experience, I've needed meditation. I've needed that time, that sacred space, to connect to and familiarize with, like in this terminology, listening. Whereas, I can then try and translate that to the world through mindfulness or being present to each moment. But it's much easier to be distracted. I just I just caught you a facial expression there. Like it's it's much easier to be distracted. And I think I'm gonna caveat like tantra as a loose term, but my sense is that some neo tantric practices that are looking at sensation maybe disconnect a bit and get a bit lost in the world because that that cultivation isn't there, and that is a bit of a, a generalization, but. Yeah, I, I like what you're talking to in terms of actually having that space to to cultivate. <clears throat> also, when you, I think I made a face when you said being present to every moment and you mm. said something else. Of course, it's tricky because it's not even that. It's not about I want to be present to every moment. That is a tremendously impossible task for a tremendously spiritual separate self you know i mm -hmm. i want to be i think in the approach that I, I'm, I'm trying to talk about we're trying to talk about this i that wants to be present to every moment this i who has all sorts of ideas about a spiritual way of living one's life and a tantric this and uh whatever um that spiritual i gets exposed but it gets exposed directly at the level of tactility and feeling simply because <clears throat> uh, simply because you're just sitting there observing in a way, witnessing all these impulses of I, mm. I this and I that. And, 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 and instead of engaging with the thought, you trace the, that if necessary, or you're right there already back into the body and feel feel all these layers of of um of striving of seeking seeking security seeking relief seeking 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 which by the way is extremely human mm. so it's not it's not like we're trying to get rid of it but it's mm. just it's just more that it's like almost like getting acquainted acquainted with it um, letting it rise up, letting it be felt at its own level, tactil tactility, energy. And in so doing, something happens, maybe. Mm -hmm. Something happens that has a, an after effect on the body. Because let's say there's a big striving me feeling that I want. And then you're just sitting there for an hour and a half, feeling the body, releasing the weight, uh, doing very simple postures, just listening to the breathing, sitting still, not doing anything. And then, of course, welcoming this kind of resistance that may come up, like, I want to get out of here. And then you're like, no, oh, dropping the shoulder, maybe. Mm -hmm. Welcoming. And, 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 and so you're allowing all this sort of habit of, of, of being a separate self at the level of the body to relax maybe mm. and the physicality that is demanded to maintain the sense of a me that when it relaxes it, it the body resumes it's more energetic state you could say it's more subtle state it, it you may have moments where <gasps> oof, this body is 
not so separate from the space beyond it, from the earth on it on which it is seated. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and and that become becomes a teaching, you know, that feeds on itself because the, and that is pleasurable, by the way. It is pleasurable. So then of course you have are you going to develop a mission to get back to that place of subtle <laughs> So yeah I, I like the um the nuance of what you describe and and i can relate to because what you're talking to is is a practice and an, and an instruction but when it becomes a conceptual want no matter how subtle like like you you mentioned like i want to be present it it takes it takes away from that level of tactility but in a way that can be really self self-deceptive because you're like oh i just want to be present. Oh, i'm just relaxing but then it, it's it's become no longer so much tactile and connecting to yeah to what is i almost want to say because you said this is approach is an instruction but then if you if you take it to the conceptual level then it becomes a method right i think it's what mm. you're saying. But I, I, I actually feel, and as I, that in a way, this method it might look like it's an instruction, and I'm speaking about it like it is. But in a way, it is much more devotional than that. Um, it's a longing. It's mm. sort of a longing, just a longing to be, a longing to be with beingness, a longing, just a longing, a longing. Yeah. <laughs> I think that would be the first. The, the first thing that one might feel in a session where you there's a softening it, because it's not uh, it's no longer that I need to be a, a mindful and da, 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 and da, da. no it's like this oh my god I and that might be the enter enter enter, mm -hmm. entry point is so sort of the longing to reunite and and the longing to 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 be in the way of of wholeness and and, and maybe also the entry point is to feel the suffering and the suffering of the wound of separation you might want to call it mm. to feel it you know there's this such a great pain there and that pain is somewhere in the body too mm -hmm. and um not to be shy to really feel that when we approach this kind of exploration. And in a way, that's sort of devo almost devotion and devotional attitude where you're coming into the shrine or the place, the gathering, and you're, oh, this, mm -hmm. you know, I feel so separate or I feel so lost. Or... And then you sit and then maybe something happens, maybe not some something happens for sure <laughs> yeah even even at the most subtle level uh, and I, I i really like uh, and thank you for the the you know challenging that the the language that i'm using because that idea of instruction does sound quite methodical and quite like masculine like this is an instruction to, to focus on the body and it and it can like what you're talking to is very much as, you could argue as feminine in terms of the receptivity but there's a profound gentleness there yeah and and i find because i i went down like the, the vipassana route at one point and also then felt uh, and one of my mentors at the time was saying like the Vipass uh, vipassana there is almost like a militant aspect to it. And I have benefited from that in terms of concentration, mm -hmm. but overall holistically relaxing more into the practice has, has definitely benefited me and, and my tendencies. Cause I think it's evident even, even in how you describe it, that devotional aspect and, and there's so much beauty in that. And I really like the idea of, of, yearning for union rather than instruction or mythology uh, method like this the idea of allow that that yearning to carry you 
Yeah. It's very like roomy esque in a way. Well, I, that's more, it's, I think, it, you know, there is a case for Vipassana, but, but, but for me, my character mm -hmm. responded very much. I remember uh, Francis Lucille when he would guide these body explorations, uh, he would use words that would suddenly it's something like unconditional safety or mm. maybe kindness or welcoming and and his voice would be very gentle and um all of that were were remind were reminding and and caressing the part of me that was so so wrapped around the fear and the need for security and suddenly there was this sort of suggestion that was transmitted through his words but also through the sound of his voice and through the images he used that would communicate yes up here but to my body directly like for mm -hmm. example the idea of releasing the weight into the support of the earth with the earth not being dead matter but being alive and unconditionally supportive he would say and he would say he would give you an image like you're sitting on the back of your favorite your best friend who happens to be this huge dinosaur and you're mm. just resting. And, and and all these kinds of images because in in this approach you use visualizations quite a lot mm -hmm. and the purpose of these visualizations is to bypass the sort of conceptual mind yeah but it's still sort of mind stuff a visualization but it it it's sort of it's a sort of intermediate between a, th a thought and a, a sort of energetic tactile experience and there would be a lot of a lot of use of and there are, I use images like that um and there's a feeling of kindness of um not just kindness always sometimes of well, all sorts all sorts mm -hmm. but, um but it's to gently uh, be gentle but at the same time there's a rigor i just want to say for the for that part of you that maybe needs that we all need that i mean yeah. it, the rigor comes because it they're not 10 minutes usually it's at least an hour maybe more there's a lot of silence and a lot of stillness um not much going on you know it's pretty boring from mm. the point of view of the mind it's like well, what you know <laughs> we did three postures and two breathing <laughs> exercises <laughs> I didn't learn anything, you know, so that that is uh, rigorous. Mm -hmm. But you're not given lots and lots and lots, like maybe in the Buddhist tradition or in Vipassana, uh, there's quite a lot maybe of tasks, although I don't know about the Vipassana, but. Uh, it's just, it's, it just, um, it's very, you know, you gave that example of, of the striving to be present. Yeah. Obviously, the the teaching itself isn't to strive to be mindful, but it it can create that kind of militant, be focused always. Like that's the practice, and and especially with the body scan. Yeah. Um, and there there is a leniency in terms of you know focusing on the breath. It's not that like you're going to get um reprimanded for not doing it, but it it that is the practice. It's like concentration, smadhi, you know really refine the mind refine and, and attune to sensation yeah well I, it, I, I like okay so because sometimes i make faces right but when you say attuned to sensations i don't make a face like yeah attuned to sensations in attune in other words reawakening the senses because we're so we we live our lives sort of from the headquarters up here and mm. most of the time we 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 feel obviously things but uh we we immediately know and have an idea about what it is that's going on and and that idea comes and interposes itself between what i don't know like life and me i mean as if i was se separate from life i'm not but and so the idea is 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 i don't know to s stop doing that yeah. <laughs> a bit you know, it's not we can't we can't we yeah. all do it's natural and 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 in and, and, and then in some other place it might be interesting to really look at it more psychologically and look at all these beliefs and images and the unconscious and it's it's really interesting and important mm -hmm. but in this approach the this um 
we're really it's more simple it's like let's 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 feel let's just feel yeah <laughs> let's feel. with that that understanding i'll just i, I will this is a question I want to, i'll just ask the question now and, and allow it to be to to take us where um, can i just uh, add something to what because i am always then the, yeah, let's just it. feel meaning let's let's suspend what we know mm -hmm. think we know mm -hmm. that we always superimpose on experience let's suspend yeah. that and 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 but still we're alive so be with be with be with be with and of course the mind will come in and but you know if a feeling comes up that we immediately label sadness grief anger rage well how about in this context which is safe we're not you know out there with our partner you know we're in this like okay let's gently gently remove the label but without disturbing the feeling mm -hmm. feeling gets to stay <laughs> so it's not easy it's a little bit artificial but removing the label the story and then just letting this raw like maybe intense very intense feeling mm. really just to be felt allowing it to be felt allowing it to really take take the body which in another context you would say mm, needing to contain needing to language need some images need to but here sorry i interrupted ricky but no feel free to interrupt in, interrupt with inspiration whenever you like you know th this feel free to do the same then okay yeah good we've got that agreement <laughs> <You're> rude. <laughs> um so yeah this this idea of i had a, a conversation with um harprakosh kausa recently he he's a, a student and a t well a student of shinzan young and it does sound similar because he was talking about becoming a person of of complete feeling and like what you're saying, how thoughts and stories interfere, suppress. We could, and this is the thing, we could really go into to the, the micro aspect and, and the nuance of what it feels like for that to happen. You know, the experience of, like, as you describe it as removing and all the, all the terms that we can use to, to describe that experience and the way that for me like when that happens to me i notice that i might feel an emotion then the thoughts come in judging it in some way not always but a lot of the time and those thoughts and that judgment create the tension in the body like what you're talking to and that tension in the body almost blocks or, or suppresses the movement of energy so there's this whole system of that can happen in like a second or less, but it's how, how like that whole dance of experience thought. And, and you mentioned the rigor, it's really not easy to No, continually... and in a way, absolutely. And yeah. that, that ping pong between like you just described, um, that, that creates a sort of accumulated density that then seems to, or comes in the way of the sort of more energetic flow uh that you know that that's that's very well described during the these uh cashmere yoga sessions we don't necessarily only focus on that we are given uh things to bring our attention to that are mm -hmm. sort of innocuous so for example we we might sp spend some time releasing the weight of the body mm. um and 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 in in doing that, in 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 attempting to do that, we come into contact with very subtle shades of holding the weight or keeping myself safe. One of the ways is just by holding That's, the weight. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and again, it's also a very natural human thing to do. But so, so we might spend quite a long time doing that or exploring the face. First of all, coming into contact with the mask, you know, and mm. feeling how tight and tense and and then through help with the guidance, letting that face come back to life and maybe exploring the fact that actually in our 
direct experience, the sensation isn't of being behind a face. It's more that the face is this sort of dance of sensations in in a field, which is mm. the I am. And mm -hmm. we do that a lot. We we so so we're not necessarily focusing on those very poor habits of tactile defense and tension. It's sort of like we're going and exploring the weight, the face. Then we might do some breath, exploring the breath, which of course is pretty loaded for most of us because the breath is there since the beginning and mm. will be there until the end of the body-mind. So, so gentle attention to the breath with invitation to feel that there is no separate breather. So, of course, the first thing we'll come into contact with is the separate breather. The habit of pulling the inhale, pushing the exhale, all, all sorts, all sorts. Um, I think I've lost my track. Um, but I, so I guess we're both attending to the habits of holding, of controlling. And at the same time, we are we're also um, listening and drawing attention to the current that is already there that the mm. breath the breath is actually happening without the need to control already even though superimposed on it there is this habit the body is already one with its environment but it seems not to be yeah. So it's not like we have to shift from one state to the other. The original state is right here always. Mm. We are, that's a good news, you know. <laughs> but it's true because we can really rec know, at least know it. No, 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 there's nothing that needs, there's not like one Ricky that needs to be replaced by another Ricky. <laughs> but there's some twisty habits. <laughs> <laughs> and, and some of them are very normal they're just part of being a human body mind you know and we'll all be wobbling along but some <laughs> could be you know uh, might benefit from a little bath like, like these sessions are like a bath yeah bath, bathing in this in this remembrance remembering remembering Rambling, rambling. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's really it it's really well put. That that also um not only describes it well, but affirms why I'm drawn to that as a practice. You know, and, and this like I've noticed it in myself. I I I'm I'm old intention now, I know I am for sure. And I, I can like relax. And even as you were talking, I was like, I've always got a lot of tension in my jaw especially like when filming podcasts or in a, in a space where I'm like, okay, I mean, I'm in a certain, you know, a certain attentiveness, keep the dialogue flowing, like whatever voices come in at that time. <laughs> but there is like, like you, you mentioned, there's a, a response and a feedback to noticing when you hold intention and relaxing it. And I think there's a lot, you know, a lot of people might experience that, I certainly don't want to say on a mundane level because it's not mundane, but just Joe Bloggs, materialist, conventional worldview, stressed, relaxing in the body. And, oh, that feels nice. <laughs> oh. But to see that as part of the great relaxation into tactile oneness, you know, this, this, like you mentioned that metaphor of the earth carrying you, and I could feel it as, as you described it some of my if not all of my most exalted experiences have had that feeling of yeah it is like tactile oneness this is this was a a line i want to explore with you because i like that term tactile oneness yeah that just came to mind i'm going to trademark it <laughs> <laughs> Go for um, it. but but there is like because this is you know it can sometimes be talking from my experience oneness as consciousness it can sometimes feel as if i'm using the word feel but appear to be that the oneness aspect is this indivisible like emptiness there's even like the emptiness and form ideas in, in in buddhism but that's not been my experience and it is almost like 
say walking through a forest there's a sensation to every other sense and I, what i mean by that is like when i'm looking at a tree it's almost like i can also perceive its texture as a as a an experience in consciousness mm -hmm. and it stands to reason that consciousness also has a lot of attributes so could it be in that space it's almost like you can smell taste touch beyond I, like, I understand when you say consciousness is an infinite array of attributes i mean mm. the whole of creation is 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 the textures and colors of consciousness right mm -hmm. it's all and when we contemplate just like you're walking in the forest and if you're contemplating like that and you look at the tree and suddenly you you can literally feel the bark of the tree and 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 further on you you have moments where you, you know the separation collapses between you and the tree um just in for a moment there or if you take psychedelic drugs i think one of the appeals is that you really can sort of stay in a state of 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 this uh, sort of absence of separation mm. on a tactile sense i i think i, I gather mm -hmm. <laughs> so with mushrooms i did mushrooms on. it was very much like that um and so yes and in in the yoga because we have our eyes closed so and 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 that so that the visual perception is sort of turned down and 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 we're we 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 although we can work with opening and closing the eyes but to begin with in the contemplations we might spend time really noticing that I don't live in a body that is bordered. It feels like that. So we, we're not going to negate that. But little by little, through different uh, sort of experiential explorations, we will directly see that bodily sensations, energy, sounds, uh, smells, all these, all these, all these experiences happen in me and me being this listening presence mm -hmm. so this this is quite profound because it's in those moments not a concept we've heard this concept many times but it's an actual glimpse and 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 and, and it's actually quite ordinary it's it's our it's our experience all the mm -hmm. time but that experience is overlaid by many many conditionings that are actually probably some of them quite functional because mm -hmm. to sort of function in the world, you know, we we each get our little body bag and <laughs> and headquarters and and you know that's so beautiful. But um, but but to also be able to sort of take it off or take the limitation off and have have a swim mm -hmm. or, or let or rather let experience swim in me me mm -hmm. having me adopted for an hour a sense of my borderlessness um yeah yeah i love that and also and i'd be i'd be keen to to hear your your view on this in terms of the the, the transformation or the distinction because i felt as my practice has developed and I've, and I can feel it now as we talk, and I can feel myself expanding through the conversation. I I, I can feel very much so within a field sensations that are my body, but equally the experience of beyond. Mm -hmm. And I remember having this insight once where I was like, so much of what we define as our limit is actually just the the sensation of skin because the skin's mostly the barrier against like the outer world. And if I become really aware of what is the sensation of my skin as it makes contact like with the outside world, mm -hmm. and is that the limit mm -hmm. or is there actually something beyond? And that is a great, that's a sensation in a greater. Uh, that's a great experience. Yeah. That would be part of, uh, that would be a very ta so-called tantric or Kashmir experiential where you would first ask yourself, where is the border mm -hmm. to myself? And then you might get in touch with the sense of your skin touching your clothes. or 
and then and then you and then you challenge that is that really the border and what is it's the border between what and what mm -hmm. then you might ask yourself well, like you were saying like what is it that is perceiving this border if it's if it's my border you know how come i can experience it as a sensation uh that seems to be sort of appearing in my percept in my in my awareness so so and all sorts of yeah. I'm, not, I'm, I'm not able to sort of put it into language very well but um and and the way i've said it now is quite conceptual but so it's a, the task or the the magic is that you you're inquiring but you're but you're trying to keep it quite quite tactile and mm -hmm. and at some point you the inquiry stops because it's just self-evident that there's this sort of sense it's a it's just this sort of sense that the borders that i felt i had as someone inside a body are fuzzy they're fuzzy i i can't be sure i can't mm. be sure where it, where 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 i end and um I can't be sure that the space beyond the body is as dead as it seems to be on other occasions. Yeah. I can't be sure that I can't be sure of mm -hmm. all of that. And 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 I'm, I'm and it's nice not to be sure. It's more alive. Yeah, and that, that also this is a it's really interesting, this exploration, because there are different subtleties to sensation. Yes. And the experience of, and this comes up in a lot of conversations, probably because I'm leading it, because I'm so interested in it, but that perceived border of sensation and how that relates to emotion and energy and the movement of inner energy. Mm -hmm. At least for me, I, I experience intense emotions frequently, which is a blessing and a curse. And frequently it feels like this this movement of energy well if i've got a sensation of the top of my head it's going beyond that if i've got a sensation of my chest it's going beyond that mm -hmm. into the space that i'm in so there becomes that play of um i guess like a play of subtlety where you start to realize that there are subtle movements of energy that are not confined by the the sensory armor of like the, the body shape <laughs> that that absolutely which i guess you know this is what a lot of traditions talk of like the subtle body um, yeah that traditional yeah. shape that shape as soon as you start to contemplate it you see that it's 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 been uh perpetuated constantly reasserted constantly th because of beliefs and conditionings and psychological uh history and cultural conditioning and just basic human conditioning but but what again when and when the time is right in a contemplation or it is easily it it is very ready to relax to ch because it's hard work to maintain all of that that sort of and if it's safe enough and sort of sort of self-evident that actually it's 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 extraneous it's not necessarily then immediately it it or not immediately but at some point it's quite immediate it might take time but then suddenly ah oh, woo mm. and 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 these movements of energy that in some traditions you might call the kundalini or whatever or spontaneous and they're free and they're they 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 jar with the the that one that envelope that needs to maintain security but but in the right place at the right time, they need not jar. They, it's fine. It's it's a liberation of energy. It's a reconfiguration. We don't need to understand it, and we don't need to fear it. Yeah. Other places at other times, it could be uh, delicate. Mm -hmm. But you know that there's an intelligence to this process. It tends to, just like there's an intelligence to the so-called unconscious, it tends to erupt when it can or when yeah. it's enough well, that's a, maybe not true all the time but because people do have psychotic breaks and kundalini breaks mm -hmm. so um, i mean i've i've 
that's that's been my experience with like kundalini um awakening and some some experiences that if they happen in public i probably would be in hospital or a section just because the like the energy the visualizations but then this i remember talking to a friend and they were like the the, the intelligence is like exactly what you say it it has a timing of its own it doesn't always work out like that but you know this idea of, of the inherent intelligence of not only the body but this whole process and how we've culturally pedestaled and compartmentalized intellectual intelligence and yet you know well, this intelligence have... yeah Sorry, sorry. No, no, no. I was just going to say, like the the intelligence of, and you mentioned the unconscious, and and something I I've really been been liberated by is is this realization that this conscious like um, control center of the ego and and this window of consciousness can hand over some of the work to a greater intelligence, and it feels like, yeah, that's the process with with this, and the, one of the main reasons I mentioned that is because I was going to ask you about because you mentioned safety mm. how intelli in an inherent intelligence links to how do I phrase this question like healthy boundaries when feeling boundless so when having a feeling of wow I'm, I'm actually a field of consciousness mm. within that having yeah having ba boundaries in a psychological emotional relational sense mm. well i just want to first say uh something about what you were saying earlier the about the ego and I, feeling like it's in discovering the ego is not in charge really because there's mm -hmm. such a belief there's such a culture i think of healing and shadow work this and then as if we you know we i the ego can sort of go do my shadow work and and it's, mm -hmm. it's just oops my mic just fell am i still online yeah you're still on yeah okay. um it's not like that i mean the psyche is the the, the ego is just the tip of the iceberg right and there's mm -hmm. and the ego is important but first of all for many of us that ego is very fractured from childhood and needs a bit of repair and then you know the psyche is sort of a very incredible, actually your previous guest, um, was it, what was her name? Jane, Jane Clapp, yeah, The Union. I, I recommend that conversation for those who are interested in in in, in all of that. But um, yeah, so your question was about boundaries and when you're feeling seamless and borderless or when you're in touch with that or when you are that. Mm. You don't have to worry about boundaries, I think. I mean, okay, th theoretically, because boundaries are natural. They're not something we have to manufacture. There is a Ricky there. There is an Ellen here. Mm -hmm. um, and, and like a wave, you know, the Ricky wave and the Ellen wave with a shape, with a past, a trajectory, a future, all of that is valid. But except that what has been renewed with is that the ocean which is the boundless, borderless, is the reality of this wave. And therefore, if the wave is in touch with that, there's a lovely quality of ease and all this nice kind of stuff. And then your question, well, am I in danger of having no boundaries? Well, technically, and no, no. If mm -hmm. if if there is a, an absence of that natural constellation of of boundary and relationship then then something's off yeah something's not something needs attention something something is out of of balance or alignment because the, the in the natural order of things apparently there's some laws some natural laws that maintain all of this mm. sort of or less you know like of course, we might lose our boundaries here and there. That That's, I mean, it's a big topic, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, from, from like, from what you've said, my, my interest is one of the, the big lines of inquiry is around 
the subtlety and the nuance of subtlety and the uh, I just got feedback there and I don't know if it's um I see no, it should be all right. yeah I think yeah no we're, we're all good um like what you're describing and then and this is probably way beyond my my remit so it's just an exploration but like personality disorders or disorders of the self so like schizoaffective traits so like this is just something i've experienced I had to work with yeah and really trying to understand them through not through a, a, a narrow or, or conventional psychology but trying to understand them in this context mm. and like you say something something's off because there are those inherent boundaries and I wonder what that is at a level of consciousness in, in this. And this isn't something you have to necessarily go into. Well, um, now we're, we're in another territory, you could say, which is more the psychological territory. Because yeah. the, boundary, the, the borderlessness we are talking about in the sort of spiritual sense is, mm -hmm. is ever present. It's not a state. It's, it's, it's our true nature. But but the body mind uh, the body mind is is rises out of and in this borderlessness. It's so that's the metaphor of the wave. so so and 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 the body mind has a shape and has an age and a gender and all this kind of thing. Um, but its reality is, it's essential reality, which is not always touched, is 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 this borderlessness, this openness. Mm. And now, now you're you're we're wondering about a schizoid sort of personality disorder, psychotic state. That's a state of the mind, mm -hmm. which, and which gives rise to sensations in the body. Um, it's also arising in this ever present borderlessness. Yeah. It's got very little to do in a way. I mean, it's not that it's got little to do, but it, it's the, our true nature is is in a way. It 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 it, it includes all manifestation, including mm -hmm. personality disorders, absence of boundaries, funny states, crazy states, mm -hmm. open states, closed states, all of it. Mm -hmm. Um, that doesn't mean we shouldn't pay attention to this phenomena uh, but maybe there it's a more of a psychological consideration uh, the mind the mind might need some help or some exploration but there might also be an intuition in that in many personality disorders there's it's almost there's or bipolar there, there's like yeah. a there's like a a, a you know, we pathologize a lot of these mm -hmm. these these things, these configurations. But you know, in other cultures, they they were the shamans were the exactly. ones who had the personalities. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so it's it's difficult to know and to. Yeah, I I, I wonder um. Because I know one something that seems really self-evident to me is like the the influx of unconscious material, mm. and I remember like when I was good, I had a, a I could call it a spiritual emergency, but just to to be real, like I had a resurfacing of of psychosis. Like that's I've had a few periods of that in my life quite intently, and it resurfaced from a different level of consciousness but i was able to bring curiosity to it and to see like what are, what are the elements of this experience and why it's so relevant to this conversation is because i had a lot of paranoia with that experience but so much because paranoia is like the ultimate separation mm -hmm. really like I, I, there are other things as well but it is like this whole world out there is against me. So it's the, almost the inverse of a, an expansive experience. And the, the illusion of paranoia was perpetuated by what you've spoken to in terms of the tension in my body and the separation of that tension. Mm -hmm. And I started to notice like, well, if, 
what happens to the paranoia if I'm more relaxed in my in my body? Mm. Is there such a rigid outside world and, and me experience? And this was part of the the gradual process that that I was exploring, as well as just projection, right? Self judgment and, and all this other messy shadow stuff. Yeah, that, that it came sounds up. very challenging, Ricky. And yeah, were you doing beyond... this on your own, or did you have some help? Um, a bit of both. Yeah, I mean, I was really, really lucky that my partner Sanya was was really good with me through it. I've got mentors that I could speak to. Mm. Most of it was on my own. I, I'm I'm now like full disclosure. I don't mind sharing this, but like I'm I'm now in therapy to address almost like the the mm. PTSD of it because mm. it's not um it, it's like what a lot of people experience when they take drugs, right? And they have that kind of break. I just had that sober for, for a long period of time um and yeah incredibly tough but i ended i'm i'm weird like i ended up doing a, a presentation on psychosis and paranoia and how that that can lead to oneness and it, sounds like it sounds like you were able you, you despite the psychosis because i guess the psychosis as you say an influx of unconscious material means that there's no longer a the ego is sort of fractured. It's, exactly. There, need, yeah. there needs to be something, some anchoring. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that's a difficult part of psychosis uh, or impossible in a way. But it sounds like you still had a, a place from which you could observe a little bit and 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 experiment. So that's that's impressive and probably life-saving or at least, you know, life at that time saving. Yeah, for sure. Mm. Yeah, that that wouldn't be a, an overstatement, and but in I a think... way that would not be the right for for if anybody anybody else told me of of such a thing, such an experience, I wouldn't recommend tantric yoga at that moment. You know, at that moment, I don't know. Just I don't know. It's 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 really hard. That you know. Yeah, I think that and to do it on your own, I I would have thought was incredibly hard. Yeah, that is an understatement um yeah yeah and i think it's 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 kind of thanks to just my my spiritual meditation practice as well and and my borderline neurotic tendency to try and learn from experience <laughs> no but you know because there when i say do it on your own and you say yes you were on your own but it sounds like you had your spirit guides you know they, yeah they, they yeah they, you survived this so well done you thank you i i appreciate that um acknowledgement you know it was, it was it was tough and there there is a lot to learn from it yeah. because because there's because like you know talk about you talk about projection all, all day long but when you actually experience so for me the the line between just feeling paranoid and then psych, an actual psychosis is where the boundary of projection is so hard to tell that you, it just appears in your reality you don't even know it's a project it's just there and there is a a nuance. This is something I want to ask you as well around if tr if I, you could say transcending the self through the self, but entering more into that field, there does appear to be phenomena outside of it, even if it's like energetic sensitivity to other people situations that there, there seems to be a sensitivity that comes with expansion mm -hmm. yes know. i think i know i i understand what you say that you know however much we taste our true nature we are still ricky and ellen body minds but maybe our sensitivity we become more porous less defense mm. less less whatever less less fearful, more open. And, and as a result, it, you know, things will be experienced. We're mm. more, to, more in our senses. So people's energies will be more palpable or places. And, and therefore it's a little bit less evident to know, you know, what, you know, what's what, uh, and, and so maybe that's the, the old ref reflex will be, you know, is that her or is that me? And maybe we have to remember, well, it doesn't really as long as there's enough of a sense of me, sort of me here, a little, you need that. But then you can say, well, it's this is what's arising. You know, there's this, uh, 
you know, and 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 you just listen. You just listen. Mm. You might have a natural with moving away from a situation or a person or a place, and it's sort of organic. It's not like <gasps> I need to protect. It's more like just moving away or moving yeah. towards. And all of that, I think, is almost like uh, an apprentissage. Like we have to be initiated into it through, like you. Uh, your boundary is being blown apart with this mm -hmm. huge paranoia and this utter hardship and confusion and then coming out of it and and just i guess humbly exploring and learning and yeah mm -hmm. part of part of yeah. that the progression yes as well because I mean, I, uh, yeah. there is a learning going on for the body mind consciousness obviously the ultimate reality doesn't apparently <laughs> just is <laughs> but but there's a lot to learn a lot to relearn you know especially mm. in the cultures it, it's so cut off and from indigenous life and earth earth and nature and cycles and bodies so where there's so much intelligence there, just organic, natural intelligence or sensitivities. Um, does that sort of explore in the same territory that you were wanting to? It does. It, yeah, it absolutely does. Because what the word that comes to mind or the phrase is self-trust. Mm -hmm. And this path, the path that you're talking to and that you teach is one I get the sense it's like learning to self-trust and part of self-trust is understanding the signals from the self mm. in a healthy way, like refining discernment. You give the example of, is that me or not me? Mm. And then how intuition is actually, it's not loaded. It's not charged. It is just, it lands and it's like so clear intuition clouded by, Right. subtle judgments Balance. is different but and, and that process isn't easy mm. to, to really get to the source of an intuitive sense but that mm. try, that's just that's a process i've been on like learning more well, and i more think to trust like... yourself is not it's lovely as a, as a as a guiding compass and but it might include becoming a, aware of the untrust ah. untrustworthy aspects um and, yeah. yeah and um also, I think your ex, your last guest touched upon it, that, that there are parts of our experience that we can't see. Mm -hmm. So that's a sort of, for all of us, you know, there's, there's a part that we can't see. And to really always hold that in our understanding uh, so that because the trust yourself could be a little bit inflated, like, yeah, yeah, I just have to trust myself because I have, I, you know, I'm sensitive. I have a lot of intuition. I had opening experience yeah. and I, I've understood it all. Well, mm -hmm. no. <laughs> yeah. You've understood something. I mean, I'm not talking for you, Ricky, but, you know, for myself too, like there are things that are felt. We we know, maybe we know a little bit more what, what intuition feels like. Yes. And we know a little bit more what it feels like to be in alignment with ourselves mm. opposed to be fractured and completely in misalignment. We know certain, we know more than we did five yeah. years ago. And I think it will keep going, but it, it's, uh, yeah. But I, I do hear you when you say trust yourself. I, I, and I think you, it's hard earned in your case. You, 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 you've earned your, your trust in yourself it's like it's mm. so, you know i have this image sometimes i remember saying that to my analyst once i said I, I it's still really hard and i still don't understand anything but i feel like i'm holding my own hand mm. like a mm -hmm. sort of sense i don't really get any of this but i'm here with yeah. myself it's a good feeling that yeah it, it thanks i appreciate that and uh, at the same time brilliantly put what, what you said in terms of self-trust really like because you're right because when I look at that I think trust 
self-trust with the knowledge and as much understanding as you have of your own tendencies where you're, you're um, like in Jungian terminology, you might say your com complexes, where are you fallible to the best of your knowledge to project, yeah. to react, to, to almost have an element of wishful thinking with an intuition. Like yeah. that's, I've experienced that or like, um, an attachment uh, you described it like an attachment to being an intuitive person so then right. you're like no no i've just got an intuition about this person and they're like no that's not true like, sure life will come and slap you slap especially because you're obviously really deeply exploring all this so life got the message and she if, if you <laughs> sort of think you got it yeah 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 it, it will it, it will yeah there'll, there'll be a lesson right there to mm. to highlight that um and it is, it, it, it's... But at the same time, you do got it and you're, you got something, you've got something you're following. So it's, it's just paradoxical. Like, yes, we trust ourselves, we follow, but we never lose also a sort of sense of not knowing. Mm -hmm. that, that the first teacher, the first place we're met is life itself moment by moment. But even then saying that becomes a tricky place because, oh, yeah, I understand, you know, I'm going to be in the moment, <laughs> only life. And, the, yeah. and and so it's a constant, it's a constant pull, pull, push, pull. And I think maybe the deepest understanding is that that will never end, that mm -hmm. it's just the nature of life, that it's, it's this. No, but it's that too. And it's this and it's that. Mm -hmm. And then there's this underlying peace. That sometimes we touch, or it's not peace, or whatever you presence, or um, Shiva, you know, like mm. Shakti, like woo 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 yeah, it not, is. And not always. Not, not always. Not always. No. no, I I think there is that. There's almost like a scientific approach to knowing that can be really useful in terms of uh, the reason, just to caveat this, we live in what some might call like the post-truth world. And Do there's it. a way that political parties, spiritual gurus can exploit the the concept of not knowing to to have like, well, what what are what are boundaries or or um almost like a not not playing the game or not meeting the social agreements that we have as a as a culture. Mm. And the difference from what you're saying of the not knowing, the scientific element is like, okay, this is my, at this moment in time, my, my, my understanding that is subject to change. Mm. And using intuition as an example, like for me, I'm always like, I know and I have enough knowledge and experience to always have a window of doubt mm. or yeah. to, you know, like in, in, um, it's not like this at all, but like in a court of law, it's like beyond reasonable doubt. Yeah. So there's always, always either. Exactly. And and there, there is like with, with an intuition and dreams as well. Yeah. You know, the nature of dreams, like you can just jump into an association, but to always have this window of doubt, at least when it comes to interpretation, but, relationships. But because, also, because also maybe it's no longer, you're no longer seeking the truth. Mm -hmm. you know that for example with a dream it's not like you want to interpret the truth so mm -hmm. you get to its meaning that would be so yeah disrespectful of the process of the psyche the, the the dream is 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 there it's talking about something the mm -hmm. dream symbols and images and you remember it in the waking state and then there's the possibility to talk with that having it to have a conversation and in that conversation something else is revealed there's a you know and and it's sort of alchemical and it's and it's not about seizing the truth it's about something else something else that's much less 
graspable as a mm -hmm. thing. And and so that, that's one thing I want to say in response to what you're sort of exploring. But and but also I think it, because you talked about the culture of, of not knowing and no truth, and it's really a fertile ground for people to exploit that. And mm -hmm. and I, I agree with that. And I just want to say that even though we may know that there's always more to the story that we can't see, it doesn't mean we can't take a position. Exactly. Yeah, that's it. Or, 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 yeah, even express an opinion. Mm -hmm. um, it's, or have have morals in because I know have morals. Morals are very much subjective at times, but mm -hmm. then. Again, that can be exploited with with certain groups, certain political decision making processes yes. of like playing with moral flexibility and and um, you see, sometimes when you, you, yeah. When you are engaged in the work that Jung might have called individuation, where you are in deeply curious about the psyche and willing to meet very. <laughs> maybe split up, you know, sort of darker shades of your psyche, of your personal psyche and maybe the collective psyche, then you, the morality that you will, um, that w may rise out of that will not be a sort of morality of right and wrong, good mm -hmm. and bad. But it will be a morality that comes out of an understand, a sort of understanding of the complexity of of the of human nature. Mm -hmm. And so maybe more compassion. Um, as, I, I don't know. But still a sort of morality. Yeah. But it won't be coming out of, you know, top down. Um, yeah. Much more. It's almost like it's more dynamic and grounded in spirit, I could say spiritual principles rather than righteousness. If yeah. that makes sense, like like you mentioned compassion, like but, is this but, compassionate? But in a way, you find out after the fact that it's grounded in a spiritual principle, yeah. but it's more organic. And then you realize, oh, I feel compassion, but I didn't decide to feel compassion. I'm feeling, oh, that's what they call compassion. Or, oh, that's that's what it feels like to take a position while still knowing what it might be like to be on the other mm -hmm. side of this. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, yeah, I, you know, so it's not like you decide these things. You find yourself more naturally flexible and able to yeah. somewhere be because you've done your homework, because you are doing your homework. You, you don't yeah. finish. <laughs> but that, but that's also, a, yeah, really, really well put, because I think that that's part of being connected, use words like to, to God spiritually, you know, is that those qualities are also of the universe, you know, yeah. unconditional love, unconditional, all, all the subsets of that, forgiveness, compassion, and gratitude, and yeah, that and can be course, weaponized and stuff. But... I'm just very aware as we talk that, because we're saying all these beautiful, nice things, I'm thinking there's this other, this sort, we're constellating the opposite of that. And just, because we're, and, you know, and that's how it is, you know, like mm. as we, yeah, compassion, natural, organic, blah, blah, blah. And then, oh, look at that little creature down there saying, yeah, not organic, stupid <laughs> shit and destruct, you know. So, yeah, I mean, I'm totally like <laughs> uh, exaggerating and, but. No, I, I know what you mean. So, yeah. Sort of like this sense always to be. To be, to be, oh, eye, oh, ears. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we've, uh, by the way, moved away from the Kashmir sessions. Yeah. And we've been talking more just to, for people who are listening, like mm -hmm. sort of veered into more of a discussion on sort of life as a psychological entity mm -hmm. who, who has a spiritual the sensitivity or something mm -hmm. yeah no good good bookmark because we have tangented a bit haven't we um yeah. well but that's great yeah no it, and, and I, I just i do agree with what you say like the the biggest challenge 
I, I think is to bring to have to have contact in those moments with perhaps a universal principle as a living breathing human flawed in in every way possible maybe talking for myself <laughs> like to to bring that into the world is never going to be unconditional it might be the the nucleus the 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 source of, of certain behavior certain morals might be an unconditional principle but the the reality is that there's so much relativity and complexity in the world that you can never capture the essence of that necessarily. And I think the issue is when ideas like unconditional love become right. concepts and they become weaponized and then some people, yeah. And then there's a whole mess of like, it's become conceptual now and it can be used in any way, in any way possible. And I think, and it's, it's not like our deepest we do good. It. We do it. So, you know, we can watch people out there doing it, but mm. more, more critically we can watch ourselves doing it in mm -hmm. small ways perhaps and and just catch it it's it seems to be a very human thing yeah. that we all do um and and it's not wrong or bad but it's it's limiting if you think about it to brandish an idea as the as a, something that we actually felt genuinely and suddenly it becomes an idea that is going to guarantee our progression and our so mm -hmm. then oh shit i'm using okay oof mm -hmm. and and but life will take care of that. Yeah, generally. <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty good at that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm aware of that. Yeah. We're, we're approaching time. Uh, as we draw to a close, would you, um, and this has been a beautiful conversation again. I've really, really enjoyed it. Fun. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Um, you've got a retreat in July, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, do you want to share a bit about that just as we, as we close? Sure. Um, it's uh starts on a Thursday, ends on a Sunday. It's in Devon, in a really very nice place. I mean, very simple place. Um, but it's right in you know near the river and the sea, mm. and there's a lovely, lovely meeting room, very silent, very lovely. And it's we'll do some of the cashmere explorations in the morning. Uh, quite quite a long session in the morning, and then I've decided to keep the afternoons open to see what wants to arise because it's summertime. And I mean, there probably would be another session, but maybe also ex excursions to swim in the sea and just be together and take walks and meals. And it's usually really lovely, uh, small groups and there's still spots because it's early days. So mm -hmm. thank you for sharing that. Of course. Yeah. It looks amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there's, a, there's a nice side chance. I'll, I'll be able to go. I would like to. That would be wonderful. Depends. Yeah. I would love that. Yeah, Ellen, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you again. And I'm sure people get a lot of value from this conversation. And I look forward to our next conversation. Yeah, so. lovely, Ricky. Thank you. And uh, take care. You too. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Mind That Ego podcast. To stay up to date, you can join the Mind That Ego mailing list if you head to mindthatego.com slash MFM. You'll also get a copy of my book, mindsets for mindfulness when you join you can also follow mind that ego on facebook and youtube where the podcasts are also displayed in video format along with other inspired videos that i create or if instagram is more your social media of choice you can follow me at ricky underscore deriz that's d-e-r-i-s-z